hello guys once again welcome back to another android application development tutorial in this video we are going to learn about what are the life cycle callbacks methods of an activity during the life cycle of an activity the activity going through different states and there are some certain life cycle callbacks methods that indicate these uh, life cycle changes so here i create a simple presentation that give you the basic concepts of uh, what are the life cycle callbacks and when these callbacks are invoked by the system so we can start the presentation over the course of its lifetime an activity goes through a number of states <coughs> the activity class provides a number of callbacks that allow the activity to know that a state has changed Within the lifecycle callback methods, you can declare how your activity behaves when the user leaves and re-enters the activity. Each activity callback methods allow you to perform specific work that's appropriate to a given change of state. Good implementation of the lifecycle callback can help your app to avoid the following situations. First one, crashing if the user receives a phone call or switches to another app while using your app. Consuming valuable system resources when the user is not actively using it. Losing the user progress if they leave your app and return to it at a later time. Crashing or losing the user's progress when the screen rotates between landscape and portrait orientation. <coughs> So here this picture represents all the life cycle callbacks of an activity. So when <coughs> we launch an activity, first callback method is on create. When we start an activity, the Android system called the on create method. Soon after the on create method finishes, your activity in started state. <coughs> then the system called the on start method. When the on start method finishes execution, the system called the on resume method when the on resume method finish your activity in resumed state that means your activity is now ready to interact with the user <coughs> your activity is in foreground and your activity stay in resumed state until something interrupted for example if another activity come into foreground that means uh, for example if a phone call is arrived it is another activity so another activity will come in foreground in such situation the Android system first to call the on pause method and if your activity is partially visible to the user your activity still <coughs> your activity continue on the pause state and if the user return back to the activity again then the system again call the on resume method and your activity start interact with the user Suppose if the activity is completely invisible to the user, in such case the system called the on stop method. So even after the on stop method execution finishes, an instance of that particular activity is still available in the memory. <coughs> so if the user again come back to the activity again after on stop, the system called the on restart method. And after finishing the on restart, the system call the on start then on resume and the activity come to the foreground <coughs> so after finishing on stop if <coughs> up with the higher priority need memory that means uh, if the system need more memory the android system kill the process in which your activity running in in that case if the user again come back to the activity the system again call the on create method so the on create method is is called only once throughout the life cycle of an activity and after finishing on stop if the activity is finishing or being destroyed by the system that means if the user call the finish method or it is destroyed by the system in that case the android system called the on destroy method in that situation the instance of the activity is completely removed from the memory that means the activity in shutdown state so this is the <coughs> life cycle of an activity so now we can learn about what are the life cycle callbacks of an activity the first method is on create you must implement this method 
which fire when the system first create the activity. In the onCreate method, you can perform basic application startup logic that should happen only once for the entire life of the activity. This method receives the parameter saved instant state, which is a bundle object containing the activity's previously saved state. Here is an example of onCreate method. <coughs> and every <coughs> activity lifecycle callback, you must implement the parent class implementation of that method. So here our method is on create. This is the only method you must implement within your activity. So here, uh, here, here is the <coughs> super class Im implementation of the on create and this is necessary for creating the activity and the view hierarchy. And here uh, we specify the layout for the activity by calling this method called the static content view. In that method you have to pass the uh, layout uh, layouts parameter for the activity and here uh, you can initialize any member variable so here we have a text view variable you can initialize any possible member variable from the on create method the on create method or invoke only once throughout the life cycle of an activity now the second method is on start after on create method finishes execution the activity enters into a starter state when the activity enter the started state, the system invoke on start callback. The on start call makes the activity visible to the user as the app prepare for the activity to enter the foreground and become interactive. For example, this method is where the app initializes the code that maintain the user interface. When this method, <coughs> within this method, you can register a broadcast receiver that monitors changes that are reflected in the user interface. The third method is on receive method. Soon after on start finishes, the system invokes the on resume callback method and the activity enter into resumed state. This is the state in which the app interacts with the user. The app stays in the state until something happens to take focus away from, from the app, such as receiving a phone call the user navigates to another activity or the device screen is turning off. When an interruptive event occurs, the activity enters the post state and the system invokes the on post callback. If the activity returns to the resumed state from the post state, the system once again calls the on resume method. You can use this method to initialize components that you release during on post callback. Here is an example of that one. <coughs> Here is the on resume method. So you must always call the superclass method first. Then here we initialize a camera object. So here we call a local method that handle the camera. So you can <coughs> initialize any variables or any methods uh, within this method that you must release from the on post method. Now the fourth method is on post. The system call this method when the user leave your activity. Use the on post method to post operations such as animations and music playback that should not continue while the activity is in the post state. You can use the on post method to release system resources such as broadcast receivers handled to sensors like GPS or any other resources that may affect battery life while your activity is post and the user do not need them. For example, if your application uses the camera, the on post method is a good place to release it. Here is an example. So here also, you have to call the superclass implementation of that method. And here, uh, we initialize the camera from the on resume method. And we here, within the on post method, we are going to release that method. If the camera object is null, uh, we call the release method and we set the camera object into null. The next method is on stop. <clears throat> when your activity is no longer visible to the user, it has entered the stopped state and the system invokes the on stop callback. The system may also call on stop when the activity has finished running and is about to terminate. In the on stop method, 
the app should release almost all resources that aren't needed while the user is not using it. For example, if you register a broadcast receiver in OnStar to listen for changes that might affect your UI, then you can unregister the broadcast receiver within the OnStop method. And the final method is on destroy. This method is called before the activity is destroyed. This is the final call that the activity receives. The system either invokes this callback because the activity is finishing <coughs> due to something, uh, someone calling finish or because the system is temporarily destroying the process containing the activity to save space. The on destroy callback releases all the resources that have not yet been released by earlier callbacks such as on stop. I hope you understand the concepts of activity lifecycle callbacks. For getting more Android tutorial updates, please subscribe this channel now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.